Hi, I'm Dr. David Clark. Over the years, I've been working with John Cotomy, an endodontist from Durango, Colorado, to redesign endodontic access. The goal? To create minimally invasive, biomimetic, and restoratively aware endodontic access, both in anterior teeth and posterior teeth. And over the years, our accesses have changed dramatically. So what's out and what's in? Well, what's out are round burrs. What is in? Tapering diamonds and tapering carbides. Let's take a look at the new endoguide burrs from SS White. John and I have worked on this project for years to help design conical carbides for endodontic access. These burrs are a modified version of the patented fissurotomy burrs. In restorative dentistry, the fissurotomy burr and preparation revolutionized minimally invasive class one composite restorations. In just a second, we're going to be showing some clinical footage demonstrating these new tapering carbides from SS White. So why are round burrs so problematic and why are the endo guides so helpful? Well, it really comes down to shapes. When we look at my brother Tom's endodontic accesses, they show the classical round burr gouging pattern. Let's take a look at the series of images that explain round burr gouging and the consequent difficulty of trying to find the canal with a hand file. Round burrs typically cut parallel sided irregular walls. This changes what should be a routine task into a potential nightmare. In contrast, when we machine a smooth conical funnel shape with the endoguide burrs, the access can be slightly off center but you can still easily trace the file up and down the smooth cone shape and routinely discover tiny calcified canals. Let me go ahead and compare them with round burrs. Let's take a look under the microscope. Now what you're seeing is some surgical length round burrs and traditional round burrs going one through six. John and I have both eliminated the use of round burrs for endodontic access and when John first came to me and said you got to get rid of your round burrs. I couldn't believe them. And this is the last thing we want to use for endodontic access. These are the diamonds that I like to use and the carbides that I like to use for initial access. They're all round-ended carbides or round-ended tapering diamonds. I'm going to go ahead and grab the new endoguide burrs. The endoguide burrs come in both latch grip and friction grip and in 27 and 34 millimeter lengths. You will notice that even on the largest endoguide burrs, the tip size, which is what matters in endodontic exploration, is significantly smaller than any of these round burrs. Let's take a look at some clinical cases, and these first two cases are featured by John Cotomy. John's going to be cutting initial access in a very calcified lower incisor. He's going to be cutting this in a friction grip high speed with the super narrow tapered fissure tip. It is the perfect size for these delicate lower incisors. And it's interesting, even though this is a very calcific system, the burr is self-centering. He's going to drop this directly into the pulp chamber in a very minimally invasive, minimally traumatic fashion. Watch the file drop right into the system. Now John is going to compare insertion of a number one round burr and look at this burr it just doesn't fit very well imagine how much gouging would have occurred with just that little round burr we already talked about the fact that they tend to wander also they don't self-center like these beautiful tapering carbides john's going to be troughing in between the mesial buccal and mesial lingual looking for the middle mesial canal system in a lower molar he's basically chasing that white dot and this tapering carbide leaves a great dentinal map when you're using a microscope. John's going to insert a smallest Munz Discovery Burr and you're going to notice that it won't go to the same level as the delicate tip of these conical carbides. They are the smallest carbides in dentistry as far as tip size. This is my case. I'm using the larger taper in a latch grip which is I think is great for general dentists who don't do endodontics all the time. It cuts slower, it cuts gently, and I'm basically chasing residual pulp tissue. It's like that little white line. It looks like old leather. So I'm gently grooming back and forth, back and forth to see if there's an MB2 or fourth mesial canal system in the molar. And as I'm bottoming out, you'll notice that I'm coming up with clean dentin. So we're confident that we don't have 
any significant canal systems in that area. I hope you've enjoyed this brief synopsis of the transition away from round burrs and some of the old-fashioned access burrs to tapering carbides and tapering diamonds, which is the future of endodontic access.